It's the nuclear proctologist.org. I'm Dana Durnford. I'm just waiting for everything to show up. It's go time for me. And my button up. Ah, I got a bad screen. Hang on a second. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll fix that. Hang on. Take a second. Waiting for the screen to pop up. And there you go. I got that. That's a bit better. Get that out of her face. Maybe my head will fix itself. Maybe not. I'll move back. Say hi to everybody. The stream should have been coming up there now. And I just done an interview on the radio, so just give me a second. I just got offline and I jumped onto this line. And it didn't show up. Let me refresh that. Look, you know, I went out and covered 200 kilometers. And if it doesn't reseed itself somewhere in one of those areas, if you don't find baby starfish, there you go. I got that. Uh, and that works. That's a bit better. There we go. Okay, now everything is working. Now I see everybody there. Hi, everyone. And so if you don't find any baby creatures, you don't find any sea anemones, you don't see any birds, you're not seeing any bull kelp, you don't see any periwinkles, you don't see uh, sand dollars, you're not seeing any snails, you're not seeing any, you know, any of the invertebrates, you're not seeing any of the carcasses, you're not seeing any insects, you don't see any insects on the highway for 200 kilometers. And so that's all I'm saying is there's nothing there for 200 kilometers. Now, I'm saying at the low tide line, I'm not saying I went out there and dove in those areas. I'm saying I will go up this coastline in the next, uh, probably next Friday, starting, hopefully, and it looks like we're going to get our way. Thanks to you, folks. Thanks to everybody out there that donated. It looks like we're on our way. I mean, um, we're probably close to 4,000. We still got a long way to go, but this is early in the game. So it looks like we're on our way. It looks like enough people understood the importance of 60 days. We need a confirmation. The system won't do it for us. And so we're going to have to go do it ourselves. Now, it'd be nice if we can stream that live. I'm not, I'm not necessarily, uh, what I mean is that doesn't mean I'm not going to do it. We'll just pull in every community and we'll upload it onto the website each day when we get ashore. And ideally, you can stream a lot of this for most of the places out there for a, a reasonable price. And so we, we, we should, you know, but I'm going to look at it. And if I can do it, I'll do it. If I can't do it, I can't do it. Uh, but w it's no harm trying. And we have a whole lot of opportunities. And now all of a sudden today is nonstop. It's go, go time all day today. I thought I was going to get a break. I got... Uh, maybe half the pictures I think up on uh, today. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, it took me three hours just to get a cup of tea into me this morning. It was just like, uh, and now I'm good to go again, I guess. The point being is that we find no life for 200 kilometers in the microscopic world, and the sea is a super life, and it doesn't populate. It doesn't bring all of this stuff back, and all we end up is just there's nothing and these are not the best pictures. I'll jump over and give you some better pictures in a moment. And I gave you that one enough last night. Let me see what I got done to you here. And I can go to desktop presenter here in a minute. Look, you know, if you don't see, uh, you don't see these uh, limpets everywhere, that's bizarre land. You don't get much more weirder than that. If you don't see snails anywhere, that's inconceivable. That, that alone, that alone is the most bizarre thing ever. We don't see the headlines of where's all the snails because someone might go look and say, where's everything else? The hell, hell, where is everything else? Like, this is a low tide line of BC. And in 200 kilometers, I don't even see one of them. I don't see a single sea anemone, but yet somehow I'm the bad guy. Somehow I'm a lawyer. Somehow I'm out, like... How can someone think that I would go up there and after nine days, the first thought of my head, you know, is to come out and lie to people and then give them pictures when they can go to the same places, which is what the intention is. That's why it's all going up on my website and go to the same places. Well, that wouldn't make any sense, would it? 
Well, Dana, the pictures, you know. I don't you know. There's like, here's pictures of the spot, Dana. You can do it to me. We'll go check. But that's the point. So nobody will do that. And so, like, now I, I'm ran ragged. I'm literally ran into the ground, and I don't care. I'm going to get my 60 days in on this coastline. Don't care. You know, me and Terry are going to do it ourselves. We had to. We don't have to. People are starting to get it now. And... You know, I don't, I don't want to go down that road because this, this is, I don't want to do this. This is insanity that I'm even talking about this. This is madness. This is stupid that I'm even considering going out there because I need to document it because otherwise people are going to say, oh, you're Looney Tunes. All you got to do is go out. There's lots of people out there who watch these videos could have went out to all those beaches themselves. And he came out and said, hey, folks, Dana's right. You know? And just think about the impact of that. Or if a hundred people done that, I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have to make another video. I would, I could tear down a nuclear proctologist the next day. You know, that's what I want to do in 60 days is just be able to go, well, that's okay. I got drowned it out because everybody gets it. That doesn't mean I'm going to go away. Because I, I, I think I got some input to put in on the future. It just means that... So where are you going? Can we, you know, if he goes in there, you're going to tear all the wires out of my car. Zoe, oh, you're in all my wires. Zoe, no. Zoe, no. Hang on, buddy. Hang on. <laughs> what do you got, Doug? Don't worry, folks. We get disconnected. I'll show back up. Get Zoe. Oh, my goodness. Zoe, hang on. Oh, jeez. What do you got done to me, doggy? Hang on, folks. <laughs> Her case, Zoe. That was fun. Am I still there? Am I still streaming? What the hell? What the hell just happened? Elliot Vickers says, "Doesn't a fuel rod contain the same amount of radiation as a banana?" <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. No, I hear you, folks. Thank you. I'm just saying. To the crazies out there who says they went down in the same spots I did and it was full of life a few weeks ago. There's no skeletons there. There's no insects there. There's no birds there. Right? You might have caught a fish there because they're further up the food chain. You might have caught a crab there because they're further up the food chain. But the microscopic world depends upon the microscopic world to survive. See? And then the whole food chain, all the way up above it, depends upon the microscopic world to create the food for the birds. I think the birds are going to eat. They're going to eat the stuff that's eating the microscopic. They're going to eat the flies that are coming out to eat all the, the dead bacteria at the lowest tides when it dries up in the sunshine for a couple hours. The flies will come out and swarm everything. There's none there. We could fit every fly on the entire 200 kilometers in a glass. So forget about the ocean for a second. What happened to all the insects? That doesn't worry you? Now you got to realize there's four big major species dominating. That's the kelp weeds. And I'll give you a picture. I'll give you a picture. Kelp weeds. I got one that we took. So the kelp weed. Uh -huh. And there's nothing else there. There's nothing else there. You know, the kelp weed, and then there's, which is the rig, uh, the cabbage, or the, the lettuce kelp. So those two types of kelp, which are like algae, they're at the 600 algae, that's the only two that's out there. At the 600. There was no little baby fries, no baby this, no baby that, no insects. There was no sea anemones. There was, everything was missing, the whole habitat, you know, like the microscopic world. Like, it's a very strong smell when you go down to the ocean. Let me see what else I got here for you. All those sponges, they're all missing. Now, they might be deeper down hanging on, but what happens is the first 30 feet is the nursery, and everything down below is older. 
but the radiation is going to get it because it doesn't stop coming out. And the whole world is sitting there waiting, you know, oh, it's okay, but the ocean's a great big ocean. But if the 200 kilometers of coastline being naked and void of bull kelp, that's incredible all on its own. You know, what about all the, the, the animals that come down and feed at the low tide? What about all the migratory birds, the 140 species that are missing that feed along the coastline and also at low tides? What about all the crows? What about, you know, how come we can't find any of that on top of everything else? Because there's nothing on the beach, it's, right? There's, there's nothing deer, and so less the creatures going to eat one type of mussel. And heavens knows we got lots of those types of uh, pictures where it's the same spotty, tiny patches of mussels. Everything is trying. That should be covered, absolutely buried in life, right? The low tide lines of British Columbia is, used to look like that. That's the low tide of what the British Columbia used to look like. And you would find that. You could find that in, in just about anywhere. You drive along the coastline at low tide looking for a place to get up on the rock piles. And some places, yeah, you won't get that much there. But most of the coastline is like that. And I spent 315 days a year on that ocean. And so I know the coastline intimately. And so that's why we're doing what we're doing. So he's not going to get anything torn out from under the table. That's okay, Zoe. You don't need to do it. In HD eats bananas. Hi, Stacy. And so when you talk about a nuclear uh, war, right? We like all the Hollywood movies and all this other stuff. We don't think about the the ocean in those movies ever. We don't think about how all life is gone. That never even gets mentioned. There's never even a sign of it. Because they would connect the dots to all the dumping in the ocean over the years that they've been doing from all the, in, all the, you know, in the 40s and the 50s and early 60s, they dumped 450 billion, billion gallons of raw, you know, waste, nuclear waste. We're talking the real deal. Just into the soil, out of the containers. 450 billion. They got 41 miles of open pits down there because they don't know what to do with it. They don't know what to do with it. And they wear these big suits and they have 500 miles, square miles, and they keep getting bigger every year because of the radioactive fallout. And the law has been going on to the point now where there's only a couple of species left on that coastline. And literally, none, I mean, nothing, nothing in the low tide nothing alive not a single creature there was purple starfish there was two types of kelp kelp throughout 200 kilometers i covered it and there was a snail one type of snail and that's it no insects no babies of any type now the ocean should populate it that's the urgency and that's the reality and that's the fact and you can't get away from that you can't no longer Look the other way. You cannot turn your back after now, ever. You, it's the wrong thing to do. If you see this through for the next 60 days, if we all go ahead, we're all doing this together. It's not me. I'm just your vessel. I'm, I'm the person you chose that you think has the ability and the drive and the gumption to go do it. Because you understand after nine months who and everything about me. You get me. And that's why you supported me in the last 24 hours with such a show of kindness, of, 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 of amazing understanding. And that's what we're doing. And, you know, you have to call me and tell me. You'll find I got the updates on the site. You can get my telephone number if you need to call me for a minute or two or you need to talk to me. And you can also set it up on Skype now. We can talk on Skype if you like. And, you know, tonight I went out and done an interview uh, with Barry Prince and you know and Barry gets it and Barry turned around and got me up on another radio show because they gets it too and they need they they need to know and they want to know and right and so tonight you know that literally give me hope that there's there is pockets of resistance out there that if they were to empower themselves if they were to understand the the enormity of the power they have and the persuasion that they're capable of, we can expose this for what it is and then deal with it.
deal with it rationally, not deal with it ludicrously, not deal with it by sweeping it away and pretending it's not happening like they've done to us, but by dealing with it, by, by coming up with a way forward for this planet uh, to try. Because right now we're not trying. And we have to come up with a way to stop Fukushima. Even if we stop Fukushima tomorrow morning, that is not going to save that ocean. And that's what I'm worried sick about. And that's what we have to document. We have no choice. The sooner we do it, the sooner the world has no choice but to, but to accept it. The sooner the nuclear industry drops. It's going to drop now because of what we've done in the last couple of days. There's no way this story is not going out. There's no way it is because we're going to do it anyway. We don't care about them anymore. They got us into this mess. They can't possibly ever get it out. We can't get it out. But we can take control of the future. We can stop because the shock to even them is too much to bear. The shock to the two million industry dependent upon the nuclear technology is too much for them to bear. They're all out of a job. And so now we see a changing of the guards in our society in the first time of history under, under circumstances that are quite shocking. Now, I can warn the elites out there right now that if you think for one second you can pull a pandemic on this planet because this is coming out in order to get away from it and go into an underground bunker or climb up a hill and live in sanctuary and escape the wrath of society, you think again. You are dreaming. Trust me. We will dig you out of your bunkers. One of your maids, one of your servants, one of the people who sold you pieces of equipment will rat you out and say where you're to and we will have our way with you. We'll drown you in your bunker or we'll dig you out. You can't stop the horde that will come for you. You are not in power anymore. You just lost all your power. You don't understand the principle because you haven't felt the blowback that's coming yet. And it's not going to be panic. It's going to be animosity towards the people that put us in this position and certainly revenge. And you can't blame them. You lied, you maniacal, sick and twisted, demented, crazy critters and put yourself up on pedestals with accolades under the guise that you had some kind of morals or that you actually had ethical principles. Knowing that you didn't, that you're a maniacal, demented, creepy person who decided to go too far. And the horror of it hasn't struck you yet because when people wake up, you can't deal with that. You can't deal with people understanding what's happening. That's why you hide everything away. Because you know they will come for you. And I can assure you, they will come for you. Even if I didn't exist, they will come for you. We don't live in your paradigm anymore. We live in a paradigm where we're taken aback because we got no choice. Because you have discredited yourselves in your governments, in your institutions, in your academics, in your medias, in your industries who have known the devastation of this and have kept silent for the almighty dollar that is no good to you anymore. Your assets are no good to you anymore. None of what you've done and succeeded and stole and pillaged is good to you anymore. The horror of what you've done will wreak havoc upon you. There's no way you can escape it because you're well known. The people that are responsible for this knew what was going to happen and believed the lie. They believed it was a banana because they said it so many times. They believed it was like walking in the sunshine because they had said it so many times for a dollar that they believed their own lies. And now they can't look at their wives or children or parents or friends or aunts or uncles or nephews or nieces in the eyes anymore because they get it. They understand what they've done and they understand how absolutely disgusting and despicable society will see them as. They are the new leprosy of the future. The leprosy was something that was innocent. They didn't ask to have leprosy. These people asked, I shouldn't have used that word, I know, but these people shouldn't, you know, it was just me trying to articulate how I see these people as being ostracized. Not, you know, and it's not really good because the people who got leprosy, it wasn't their fault. But the nuclear industry, the nuclear lobbyists, lobbyists the nuclear professors and scientists and pundits and apologists, yes, oh yeah, it's all coming for you, baby. 
You're going to get yours. Oh, yeah. Those hot wheels and that pretty little wife you got there. She's going to despise you. Oh, you have no idea how much she's going to turn you in. Your, your own parents will turn you in. They'll probably they'll be like Rwanda if you're not careful. If you don't do this right, if we don't have our way, they'll come for you. Like we get our way or this planet is coming for all of you. We get our way and we have an opportunity for a future. We don't get our way and the planet finds out the hard way through the apologetic media and then finds out about the truth. You don't think they're going to come for you. You don't think they're going to come looking for you next door. You don't think the neighbor next door who you chat to all the time is not going to turn on you. You don't think your children won't turn on you because they're going in school and everybody's hating on them. You don't get what's, what the significance of is happening. You know, you're in for a serious surprise. You ain't got no pension. You got no future. You got no job. You got no security in the nuclear industry anywhere. You're about to become despised beyond imagination and no Ebola is going to salvage what's coming for you. That's not going to work. We live in a society where that just you just where you need the robots to pull that one off. Because if the Ebola shows up, if there's a pandemic on this planet, the planet's coming for the elites. And they may think they're not known. They may think they're out of the light. They're not. People do things for them because they're disgusting piglets. And people have, people have big mouths. And so nobody out there is hiding away, controlling anything that somebody don't know about. And will rat them out when the time comes just to get rid of them. Because they truly are disgusting, despicable creatures who just went too far this time. You went too far. You destroyed everything. Every sanctuary on this planet with radiation in order for a handful of corporations to get paychecks and to carry out a eugenics against the planet. Don't take for a second that it's not coming after you. Don't take for a second that your pensions are, are going to last you. It's not. Don't think about the assets you've stolen are going to be useful for you in the future. They're not. If you don't do the right moral and ethical thing and turn your back on this creature. You know, I look at it, we need scientists to try to deal with it. We need the nuclear scientists to find out what they've really done. We need the nuclear scientists to find out where they dumped all the barrels to. Off the boats. It's about the only reason we really need them. And after we find them all, we don't need them anymore. We really don't. And they're, they're literally worse than every criminal put together on the planet into the one being a nuclear scientist. Look what they've done to us. Even Oppenheimer knew it. And yet the governments and the senators and the media fawn over these apologists. It's disgusting. And the truth is no longer bearable or tolerable. And we need to have a resolution to what we see, no life, in the Pacific. It doesn't reseed itself. What you see behind me, for starters, all of those rocks should be full of these things. All of the rocks back there should have been full of that, right? All, you know, we should have found sand dollars, and we should have found limpets, and up in the high tide lines, we should have found sea anemones, and kelp grass, and insects, and we should have found different types of starfish instead of just a purple starfish. McDonald's is going to start selling... Purple fillet at starfish soon because that'll be the only thing left out there. There's no insects on the entire 200 kilometer coastline. We cover 200 kilometers. And you don't think that the world is going to wake up and understand that the ocean never receded it because radiation cooked it. And we have now to go prove it because they put us in this position. We now have to drag my sorry ass for 60 days then document it all before we even can have an opportunity you know that's not right I shouldn't have to go see all of that because we know what we're going to see you shouldn't have to see all of that it should have never happened is what I mean boy that statement it should never happen that I cover 200 kilometers over nine days you know, I haven't got the anger anyway. I can still get a little go, but I just have, don't have it in me anymore. I got to find out. It's really, it's like a really bad dream. I got to find out to that next 60 days. 
it's really bad and if we don't find out uh, who are we gonna blame if we don't try now that we know who the hell are we gonna blame in the future if we don't at least you know if we're not gonna be the checks and balance we shouldn't be here right that's the reality of what we're doing and that's why I'm you know I just done an hour interview on the radio and hopefully I'll do another one as quick as anybody wants to call me I don't care what time of the day or night it is I don't care what it takes for me to get this out there I don't care right uh, I'll get a translator if you don't speak it very well I'll find one whatever it takes to get it out there you should take some of my material if you can speak another language and translate it you should take you know five dollars or ten dollars and go down to the local newspaper and just put an ad it's it's anonymous say to nuclearproctologist.org and people will click will go over and check it out and then they'll understand there's an issue that has to be dealt with and it's stuff like that but journalists and there's a lot of retired people read those those ads you know I put I gave people my bank account number and information because I know a lot of elderly people who are paying attention they don't use many electronics or they don't use this they don't use that and they deal with the banks all the time and it's easy for them because people have asked me to do it I, I and I like I don't have any issues I'll go out with a cup on the side of the road everywhere I go and beg for money and Terry can put a string around me I get some monkey ears and we'll play a little chummy just to make enough money to go to the next spot and the next spot after that but it isn't like um, it got to get done and it has to be done right it has to be done effectively it has to be done with complete open sea that's why I gave you all the spots that's why by the moral I have the rest of it loaded up on my site and then people can go down to the same beaches and fisheries can go to those beaches and anybody can go to them and do what we've done and see that I, and then I don't have to do that see but I'll go do it all again with higher quality you know or whatever I don't care there's all this coastline we gotta we gotta go all the way up north and then we find it all the way up is symmetrical then we know then the whole Pacific Basin is the same then can we have a debate then will people take it serious then will people actually give it a second thought I don't know I doubt it right I doubt it the only way this is ever the only opportunity we got left and the ocean has told us this in no uncertain terms the ocean has categorically said that you know there's four species left in any kind and they're not in abundance they're very patchy but they're everywhere they're trying it's still trying to survive and that's all it's got left there's no babies anywhere right it's begging us to do to, to deal with it and the system that we put there to do the job won't do it right it ignored it everything that happened is just ah, it's probably some kind of the uh, chicken pox or it's smallpox and like I'm not gonna say what I want to do to that person because I normally would and it got something to do with a cheer and throwing it but you know we gotta move past that too we gotta now 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 200 kilometers has a very significant meaning to it no insects no crows no life outside of four species the same four for 200 kilometers and a great big ocean everywhere that doesn't see this Do, can you even imagine how ludicrous that is how bizarre and twisted that concept actually is when you're talking about how many species are actually in the ocean they estimate there's around four million species in the ocean we haven't even discovered you know think about that do we have a right to 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 wipe them out like we just done no of course not should they have some kind of uh, we have all kinds of, of government officials in every community on the coastline we spend fortunes millions of dollars for the same government organization to take care of the ocean and not a single one of them can you imagine what me and Terry could do if we had one one hundredth of their resources for a single day we could probably go for six years with it we need don't need that we only need 60 days that's all we're asking for is everybody to help us for 60 days support us for 60 days we're not gonna let you down we're, we're gonna knock our socks off to get the most out of that we're gonna po get everything for posterity's sake 
You know, I can't drive this. I shouldn't be here tonight. I should be on my way to the North Coast in one of the Coast Guard's luxury boats with the taxpayers paying for it. Like they could do easily, right? But they won't because they'll prove me right. And so we got no choice to do it. And so I got to hunt down everything. I got to go find a couple of 30 million pixel cameras. I got to come up with funding for all that. And I'm the bad guy because I want to go find out. I'm the bad guy because I want to do it in 60 days. I'm the bad guy because I haven't stopped for nine months. No, I don't think you people will allow that to happen to me. I don't. I'm not even going to consider that that's not going to happen. That, that I am, I'm going to consider that I am going because that's what I am doing. And then everybody will have to support me because I'm gone. And every we can do blogs from the road from every community. Our plan right now is a 14-foot Zodiac. And that's $6,700. And then a motor on the back of it. And then a trailer. And then the fuel and transportation. And then go up the coastline. And in places we can't get to, because we have to do this, we're going to find fishermen to tow us up the coastline for a couple of days. And we'll run around at the low tides and with the underwater cameras and get the high quality footage. And when we get in port that night, we'll upload it onto our site. And, keep, and if we can get a stream, we'll put out a live stream. But if not, we can at least upload it. And there's no reason if you can upload it, you can't put out some kind of a stream or video. And we need 60 days to go up this coastline. We need 60 days. And by rates, I need a 300-foot boat. But it's like a disposable boat to me. Everything I'm doing is only for 60 days. I get that. And I get the importance that it has to be done. And I don't know what to do after. Outside of now we can have a debate? Maybe? You don't know? You don't suppose? Doesn't that sound like the right thing to do? Doesn't that seem like, like the thing that has to get done? Is that we need to go record everything in super high quality. 60 days. It's up there every day showing up there. And it won't take 60 days for the rest of the planet to come on board. Is how I, That's how come I think that way, right? But I got to get out this gate. I got to get out the gate to make that happen. And we got to do it at least with, with um, 30 million pixels or even 24 million pixels, right? At least that kind of quality so you can zoom in in perfect clarity, right? And you need shots from the ocean and you need shots on land and you need confirmation of everything and documentation. You need latitudes and longitudes and verifications so everybody and anybody at any given time can go back to that exact rock and get a picture of the exact rock and make sure specifically exactly everything. So that's the openness we want to bring and the better way to do it is to bring it to you live for 60 days. Right? But that's not going to be cheap. Don't think this is going to happen you know because I got the government on my side, I could go do everything tomorrow morning. I could be gone out to bay tomorrow. The government's like, come on, Dana, we'll give you what you want. You don't want much. And in only 60 days, well, let's go do it, Dana. Right? Show up. Call me. It's 250. It's 25. Is that you? Hello? You're speaking. No, that wasn't Fishers and Oceans. That was one of you folks. And you're going to call me back. You didn't know I was live, and that's okay. But that's what I mean. I'll get up in the middle of the night if you call me, and you got a question. If it, Even if it's a personal question, you need an answer, or you need to be consoled with an answer to, to be able to, to resolve what's going on. And I, I might be able to help you. I'm not saying I can give you the answer. I'm not saying I'm the answer. I'm just saying I'm the beginning of the debate. That's the point of what I do. I'm not the answer. I'm here to educate you. I'm here to give you some kind of emotion and, and information that is useful for you. 
that you can digest and that you can go out and go from there, right? Don't think for a second that my job is here to to solve any issues. Like, and I'm not solving any issues by doing what I'm saying I'm going to do. What I'm doing is, you know, I need it more for myself on top of that, but we need to know collectively as an entire planet, we need to know in real time all the time. And we live in that age where we could do that. And it might be shocking. It might be horrifying. It might be wicked. And I have no doubt it can't be much more disturbing than my last nine days. I don't know if I'm ever going to get over those days. And here I am looking at 60 of them. And I don't think anybody could be more shocked than what I'll be. I'm the guy who dove the coastline. I'm the guy who done it because he loved it only. I'm the guy who understand the significance of, you know, that if I don't do it, then who? It's not going to be fisheries. They could do it on a drop of a hat. They can create a website just like me and start loading up the videos and we can go out and check. I don't have to do that, right? We paid them to do that with our monies, our taxes. And they ain't even got a pension because there ain't going to be no fish left next year. So they got no fishery. There will be no fisheries next year in Canada or United States or the Pacific Rim. No Pacific officers. There'll be none. Because there'll be no fish. There's nothing there. Only four species and they ain't going to be there. Because Fukushima ain't going to stop. It ain't never going to stop. Because we won't have a debate. We won't even try. Because And now we got a dead Pacific Ocean that doesn't have babies in it? Do you got any idea what that really means? Do you got any idea why I'm here begging you? Begging you. I'm begging everybody. That's what I've done the last couple of days. That's what we've done. You know, we have to go to this nine, to you know, to the whole nine yards because anything less is cheating everybody and every we need it and I think more so to convince ourselves than we do for everything else it's just something that has to get done and do you want Ken Busler and Jay Cullen to go up there huh is that what you want no of course not is that even more horrifying than everything I've said tonight together that they would go up and have the last word and if they did if they do go up there and cover the whole coastline would you like it if Dana went up to toe behind him with a couple of high quality cameras <laughs> looking for him? Where I heard they're up there somewhere. I gotta check the beaches, but I'll find them. They can't even hide away in 26,000 islands. I'll friggin' find them. And I know some people says, Dana, don't raise your voice. Dana, sit up straight. Dana, lift your chin up. Hold your chest out. Stomach in. I live in a friggin' hospital bed. I live in a wheelchair. What do you want? What do you, where do you think I'm going to give me posture that I can hold for more than 30 seconds again? I'm a little confused. It takes me a half an hour to iron a friggin' shirt every night. Do you, <laughs> uh, do you think I would do that if I didn't have to sit in front of a camera? Do you got any idea what, what it takes to do this all day? Right? You know? And all I want to do is get my other 60 days in. That's all I need is 60 days, folks. 60 days on this coastline. And I shouldn't have to come here and beg everybody for that opportunity. I don't think I'm asking very much. I don't think the world will want to look back and listen to the videos. Poor bugger, he had to beg him. He begged him. <laughs> Jesus. It was terrible. The ocean was dying. And here was this guy who wanted to go, who knew what he was going to do, who was going to feed it out to everybody. Do we want to be the society that looks back on that? No. And that's why I work so hard to make sure that that can happen, that that won't happen. And it's because it's happening so fast, right? It should never happen. We, we never dreamt that in three years it'd be naked. Who the hell thought that one? Right, we're looking for a few mutated three-eyed fish or something, right? Jeez, what next, you know? And oh, instead, what do we got? Look at what we got. And we can't have a debate about it because an apologist got us in a headlock and won't let us go won't let us try they'll strangle us till everything on the planet is dead before they say you know they probably had a point yeah so okay let's go back into our bunker the ones they didn't dig out before they all died off and don't think this whole planet is not going to die off well if that ocean could die the biggest body of water on the planet don't got babies that's dead so the bigger fish will live for a little while longer, but it's coming to a close. 
And if we don't stop Fukushima, we don't even try, then we got no right to complain about the future that we don't leave behind. And we need to leave a future for another generation, unlike our ocean, right? Do we deserve, and the ocean, but at least we need to try. I don't know what to say to people. I, I'm like, if I don't get out there and get going, the sooner I go, the sooner it's over. The sooner I go, the sooner we can all come and have a, a resolution. You know, the whole planet, like governments now are going to fall. War is finished. They're just finishing it out on it. But as this wakes up the planet, as the planet sobers up and comes to this realization, you know, this planet, uh, this should never have happened. We, we, we have no right, right? This, the arrogance th that we have done to this planet is really, it's really something. It, you go out there and there's no smell, there's not even a fly, there's not a crow, there's nothing that crawls, there's nothing that moves, there's nothing that breeds, there's nothing there that got a DNA in it. Outside of a couple of species, out of fifty something hundred that we know live in those Straits of Georgia, none of them had babies this year. That's how I see it. Six hundred kelps, algaes gone. Around ninety sponges gone. Sixty-four starfish. Only one type left. There's no. You got like look at this stuff. This is what it's supposed to look like. We need to get to the west coast. And I know I'm not going to see that. I hope I'm wrong. I pray I'm wrong. I really do. But, you know, more than anything, we, any more than anything, I need to know. And you need to know. Right? There's no whelks. There's no sponges. There's no algae. There's no color. It's utter nakedness. None of this exists out there anymore. There's always, there's a uh, Look at the look at this, Zoe. It's okay. Come on. You know the periwinkles. Hey, on Zoe. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, Zoe, 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 Zoe. Uh, look at this. Every pylon on the coastline and every harbor and low tide, you should see these everywhere. There is nowhere out there that they don't attach themselves to. I never seen a single one. Not one. Not a single one. And there's more than just the white ones, but those white ones are everywhere. The, the ocean is alive with these creatures. Every rock in the coastline that can feel the sunshine got one of them on it, and they're all the way down to 900 feet. But we don't see anything in the first you know, at the lowest tide lines of the day, every day for nine days, and everybody's, oh, Dana's cuckoo. But the ocean is a super life, and it should seed everything again. Even if they all got wiped out, come back in a few months, and you would never know it. They'd be smaller, but you wouldn't know that they got wiped out. You wouldn't even know they were small ones, because there's one so many everywhere. Every rock would have six and seven and 20 and 30 and hundreds, if nothing else was there. Or they were jostling for the space. The entire ocean floor in the shallow water where I, I am a specialist, every square inch is life. That's why I loved it. That's why I done it six hours a day, seven days a week, 315 days a year. It's not because, you know, because um, $29 a minute, not that that was hard to live with. No, I would have done it for nothing and I did. That's how I got to where I was. You know, I, I loved everything about it. I lived and eat and breathe, and I still dream of that ocean. And what, you know, what we were doing before I came on board this was we were going to put cameras in the ocean and in 200 kilometers and feed it out at $5. I had a company, you'll find a video on my site about that, on this beautiful girl by Dana's site where I got jacked on my business and the University of Victoria stole my business plan right down to the business plan, the exact business plan and got $300 million on it. 
and I was going to put 100 cameras, it's called Marine Channel Productions Limited, and I was going to put 100 cameras into the ocean, because there's so much life there, I can put a camera everywhere, and guess where I was going to put the cameras? At the low tide line, because that's where you had the most sunlight. And I was going to enhance it with lights, but there's nothing out there. In 200 kilometers, I could fit everything I saw, including the birds and the seals, in a wheelbarrow. And we can't have a debate. And this life that you see behind me should populate absolutely everything. The bull kelp should be everywhere. You can't get your boat through it. Your boat is all clogged up because you're an idiot and you weren't looking. Because there's so much out there, that's the only way you can run into it, is you're an idiot and you weren't looking. And if you're an idiot and you weren't looking, you would run into it. You will go out there now, you won't run into anything. Outside of logs, because that's British Columbia. But all those sponges and all those sea anemones and all those algaes and all those starfish and all those sunfish and all those big stringy kelps on the rocks, they should be sticking out of the water at low tide. Big stringy kelps, just like you're seeing there right now, but loped over, right? But, but even the short ones should be sticking out. It should like like when you're coming in with bad eyesight like I got, it should look like kind of like a, a dead forest there at the low tide line with all these sticks standing up with broken looking pieces. But there's nothing. Right? I'm able to zoom in for a long way, even though I can't get out there and survey everything myself. Don't think I don't. <laughs> right? And that's the point of going up to the British Columbia coastline every day. Like you you empower me to go do this for sixty days is all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking, 60 friggin' days. 60 days, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll have so many pictures, high quality, unimaginable documentation, and authentic, and put out properly, so you can actually find the places with enough landmarks every time to make sure there's no misinterpretations. Right, and that's, then they can't argue. You could do it, anybody could do it, and we take away their ability to keep the law alive. Right, that's all we're doing is, right, I'm just helping you by taking away their ability. You guys can go out and finish the job, but we can take away their ability to keep the law alive, see, by doing this to them. We already done that in nine days, but like they're still, they're still want to play the game, but we have to do this right. It is incumbent upon us that I be able, that you free me and allow me to be able to go up there and in 60 days stream it live is more important than everything put together because you need to know in real time they need to know in real time and then I'm safe in real time because you have your watchful eyes upon me all the time and I have a history on the ocean I know what I'm doing but we're all protected and we all enhance each other by doing this right everybody you know I'm going into a scary zone by saying the things I'm saying by doing what I'm doing by challenging the ones I'm challenging by coming out and, and uh, you know saying that we need to have a debate and that we need to come out and do it ourselves in order to start the debate, right? I shouldn't have to do it. Fishers should say, okay, Dan, that's a great idea. We're going to get all the fisheries and oceans because there ain't no fish out there to go out and have a look and take pictures and document it and put it up on the website. And Dana, we're going to give you one of our best Zodiacs. Dana and the fuel card and we're going to empower you and allow you to go do it yourself. I think that'd be pretty cool. I think it would take a lot of weight off everybody's shoulder and I think somebody might have, the whole planet might actually have a little bit of trust left in you. But if you allow me to go up there by myself and do it by myself, then so help me goodness, I will go do this in a 10 foot zodiac with a 9.9 .9 on the back of it because I can do that. And I have that ability right now to go do that. And I friggin' well will go do the entire coastline. And I'll post it every day. Pathetic old man in a little tiny zodiac. Out there in these dinky taking pictures. That shocked the world. And where was the world? Well, we couldn't reach him. Because everybody out there just refused to, to try. And that's why we're in this position. I'm sure there's good people out there in the industry right, that I got manipulated and just bought into it at some point. And it's not too late to do the right thing and help me. Like most of you people in the nuclear industry, every one of you should give me a G note, you know, and we go do this. And you can look back and say, well, at least I've done something right. 
considering I killed the ocean. The people that are watching this shouldn't have to give me a nickel. It should be the industry, it should be the governments around the world, around the Pacific Rim that should be empowering me, not you. I shouldn't have to come to you and beg. And, and I don't, I, It's not begging, it's not a word that I'm going to use anymore because that's stupid because I don't do that with you. Right? I, I, I ask and you give. That's how it works. I ask and in the goodness of your heart and the understanding you give. But tonight, I, I, like I feel desperate that if I don't, I just feel hopeless sitting here and not knowing, I guess. And that if I don't get the opportunity that, that I deserve, then I have to do it the hard way. I have to get a log and I have to put a friggin' big tarp on it and sail up the coastline. Then that'll be what I'll do. And I'm sure they'll come and drag me and put me in a white room and everything. And eventually I'll get out and I'll take a rowboat and I'll row up the entire coastline by myself with a bucket of water and Zoe barking off the bow, counting the starfish and giving them a name. So when I come back down, no, I'm not kidding you. And do you think I'm not capable of walking out and doing that tomorrow morning? You have no idea. Uh, who I am, that I actually am capable of following through on a dinky and heading north. And I'll stop in every town, I'll phone up the local radio station and say, hey, would everybody like to throw in enough money so I can get me a, uh, a bigger paddle to row myself up the coastline because I can't find anything on this side of it and I kind of keep going until it's all done. I mean, that's the absurdity of, of why... I have to come out tonight and for a whole, <laughs> and I was not supposed to do this tonight, but I think the urgency all day long, the absolute, absolute nightmare all day long that I go through is why I'm here tonight after being on the radio for an hour and doing the same thing, and well, I'll be back again tomorrow, and, and, and well, I'll be back every opportunity I get till I get my way. I will get my way. I know there's a few people out there who'll still buy a kidney or two. I'll get my way up there. I don't need two friggin' kidneys. If they'll buy one, call me. Call me if you need a kidney or something. Who knows? We can hook me up. I'll give up. I'll give up a kidney. If you wait till I get back. <laughs> I ran out of steam and I'm just repeating myself at this time. Um, I'm repeating myself, I think, because I'm desperate at this stage to get up there. And I don't know why I'm the guy, right? Why well, I got to go do this. The only the point now is that I feel that if I don't do it, we ain't never going to know. If I don't do it, we'll never have the debate. I won't be in a debate. I'm sure that I'll get locked out of everything after this. But if we could prove it, I, I'm not going to blame them for locking me out because I'll give them a hard time. But if we can prove this part, right, then I don't got to do nothing else. You don't got to do nothing else. We'll have the debate now in the sense of, you know, the proof is there now, see? And we know what it is. We know this is true. And we know what belongs there. I dove the whole coastline. I'm going to go back to the spots and break my heart is probably what scares me the most. Is that thought, right? And Barry Prince, who I done an interview with tonight, he's up in Terrace, up towards Prince Rupert there, if I remember correctly. You gotta realize my brain has been ra just, just wrecked. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'll keep going. And he's the next diver, and so he's willing to go in the water when I get there. And so that'll be one of my stops. I'll be looking for people to open their homes up to me in my dinky. And uh, I'm sure Terry's coming anyway. So we me and Terry in our dinky. And we can do this on our own, but we don't want to do it on our own. We want to share it with the whole friggin' planet so nobody can hide away from it. Right? We get two days of this at low tides. Oh, we're going to change the game. They'll probably give us a helicopter at that chain to try to get back in our good books, but it'll be too late. You should be coming to me tomorrow morning. Right? And give me a police escort to the boat and give me an escort to the helicopters. And we go get this done in a week instead of 60 days. We can go pin this whole coastline. No, actually we can't. 
you know, and I'm assuming there's a lot of people out there that, that don't know in fisheries and everybody else and the governments that really doesn't know what's going on. And if they find out and that we could switch them, we could actually go and then deal with it. And if we got to evacuate the entire coast of the Pacific Rim, which is what it's going to look like in the next year or so, there's no reason to stay here anymore. And, you know, I'm not going to go down the roads tonight that I can't go down. But I, I'm just rambling on in the point of, you know, you, like I, I, we got every opportunity to do it and help me. It, it, there's a lot of people out there that understand the significance, right? And they're sitting there and they don't know what to do. And I, I, I'm reaching out to just anybody. I know there's multimillionaires out there that have a lot invested and, and that any one of them could sponsor us right you know and to get this done and they can come on board and they can come with us if they want to they they don't get to control the narrative nobody gets that you know it has to be the pictures themselves that tells the narrative we just interpretate what's missing right and everything you see there in these pictures is missing and 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 there's one more picture i'm going to wind it down for everybody i'm not going to go any longer because i'm worn out at this stage but not worn out in a bad way. I'm worn out because I have so much to do. I don't have enough minutes in a day to get the job done. I don't have enough seconds to get everything I need done. And I'm not neglecting anything, see? And I'm looking, now I'm on everything. Now I'm at um, email, Dana Durnford at hotmail.com uh, is a better one. And at live.com, Dana Durnford. You can get me at 250, I'm sorry, 604. 250 or 233 uh, 1075 you'll find it up uh, up on a nuclear proctologist.org and you can call me anytime okay if you have an epiphany call me if you, you can get me up on Skype you want to have a, a interview you can quote me you can take my videos and monitorize it and sell it in bootleg and make a book I don't even care and donate that I don't even care if you keep it as long as you get the information out there but all I'm asking for is 60 days right I'm desperately asking somebody out there who's in a position to set us free this whole planet free right that's what you're doing you're sending us free to try and by going up there and spending 60 days you're empowering us to go try and, and or to, to create an opportunity to try by having definitive answers. This is definitive what I'm talking about. There's, there's no arguing about what I'm talking about. I go take the pictures and there's nothing there. there there's no arguing about what happened. Right? There's no six month study, six year study. It's going to take a couple of years. It takes a long time to take a sample. None of that. I go up, I document everything from one end to the other. We take all their power, we take all their steam, we take all their energy away. Who comes out on top, right? Whatever species can survive, right? Because it's not just us. There's 8.8 .8 million species on the planet and they don't speak English. And we got we to gotta do what we got to do. And I'll do it in a dinky, but I don't want, I don't want to beg anymore. I don't want to come out here and have to do this a single day again, ever. I really don't. Right? I want to come out and fill you up with information and come out and explain things and break things down and talk about cancer cures and about how water, structured water. I want to be able to come out and w without the stress and the agony that I'm going through of how do I get this accomplished now? How the hell do we even pull off the first nine days with $600? I'm never going to, you know, I don't, if it wasn't for Terry, we wouldn't have never got this far. And he understands that he, you know, it doesn't matter, we're going to go do it. But I don't want to see him liquidate everything he got to go do this. And that's what he's going to do. And that's okay. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying we should be able to go off with a clean conscience for 60 days. This is not, this is like trying to stream 1,440 minutes a day. You're looking at a buck a minute for 60 days. And so that's a lot of money we're talking about. We're talking about we need people. We need, we need to bring in educated people to pull this off properly. 
We need real gear. We need disposable. Uh, we need a disposable life for 60 days because that's what we're doing is a 60 day go. You know, and the government has all the equipment. We shouldn't have to go do what we're doing. The government can give me all these cameras. The government can give me the motors. They can give me the boats and, and the equipment and the safety and the communications and the satellite feeds, right? And I can just go, right? And I can go get a shower every three or four days in the hotel room and sit there and upload everything while I'm sleeping, right? And then get up next morning ready to go, willing and able to crawl through this entire coastline. Uh, you find me somebody that's, that has the ability and, and the knowledge and the gumption and, and the audacity and the drive and has hope like me and, and will keep on going until the job is done. No matter what I see and what I run into, I will get this job done. I'm your man. I'm, I'm not a man, I'm just your, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm, not, I'm the vessel. I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a, I don't know how to describe what I went through the last nine days. It, you know, you kept, you kept waiting for an echo everywhere you went. It really, you know, it, 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 that's what it felt like, you were waiting for an echo. It was still. And it took me days to come to, the, to realize no insects, no birds. Nothing in the tidal pools, like you see, see that picture there, that hurts me to even look at it. It really does, because that whole area is going to look like that now, at low tide, instead of all kinds of stocks standing up. And that if we don't, if we don't hold this industry accountable, if we don't try, they got nothing left either. Nobody got nothing left if we don't go and do something so we can have that debate. That's all I'm saying. Let me say goodnight to everybody. I won't give it up. I won't give it up. In fact, I'll just... You know, I just... I'm exhausted thinking about it. That I'm going to go up to there's nothing left. And that, you know, it's got to get documented before those other four species disappear. Because if they disappear, there's nothing left. And that means there's nothing for a single bird to eat, crunch on on the shoreline. There's no insects. There's nothing. No flies, no nothing. So, yeah, it's one of those videos. It's one of those videos where people say, Dana, oh, in 200 miles, that's normal. Not to have any babies in the tide pools. Not to have any other species but four species. And, oh, Dana, you didn't go diving, which is what I say all the time. No. I want a camera. Well, did you got any idea how much money it takes to go do an operation like this? And that the system won't jump out and do it. The trolls won't go out there and do it. Right? They, they got this whole fake shit set up to confuse people and to torment people and try to get people to look away. The last thing they want is me doing 60 days on this coastline. They're desperate to discredit me now. Because of what we said tonight and on the radio show, they're going to come out and attack me. Mercy is, it's going to be nonstop. Don't you fall for it, okay? Don't you fall for it. You know a fact that they won't go out and photograph the same beaches at the low tides like I done in the same spots. And they can because I'm putting it all up on my site. That's the point. Anybody can go follow my boots and see everything because that's what I would like to do. I would like for them to go ahead, fisheries and oceans. Photograph the beaches, put it up on their websites, tell me where it's to, and I'll go there and photograph it. Right? And then we'll get somebody independent who knows the address and will show up there without telling anybody and put it up on their site to confirm it. That I can live with. But they're not going to allow us that opportunity. And so the one opportunity we got right now is we go do this ourselves. And that's the end of it. Right? And it's better to do it the right way. It's better not to play around and wait because that's what got us into this mess in the first place and what I'm doing is I'm begging you folks to empower me to free me up to send me out there and allow me to go do what needs to be done I can't do it without your help you know it's a big undertaking and so let's go say goodnight folks goodnight everybody Starlight 
Tom Sims, Sean Can't Surf, DJ, <coughs> Ellie Wins. We don't care, Double Hoop Nation, if you buy into anything, okay? We don't, I don't care of what you think, man. No offense to you, look. There's nothing there. You can't call me a lawyer until you go there and you look yourself and you take a picture and you put the video up on the internet and you, you put it up on the internet. And then you can call me a lawyer. Until you fucking do that, you can't call me a lawyer. Don't call me a fucking lawyer. I'm not lying. The fucking ocean is dead. Why do you think I'm here? Why do you think I'm fucking here? Do you think it's a joke? Do you think the last nine days is some kind of sick fucking joke? Don't anybody call me a lawyer again. You go look. You get pictures. You put them up on that site before you open your mouth and you slur me. You do not take my name and use it that way. I do not deserve that. I do not lie. What I show you is what is there. You will not treat me like that anymore. I am sick of it. This is why we have a dead ocean. It's because we allowed you to be the bully. You will not bully us anymore. We will look for your IP address in the future. And we will hold you to account. Don't think we won't. Don't think we're not paying attention to you. Don't think we don't look at people out there that are trolls and record their IP addresses. Don't think we're not doing that. We know who you are. We know what you've done. And we're going to go prove it. And there's nothing you can say will change that. You will never change that what is going to happen. right? Your history is finished. You have no pensions. You maniacal, sick, twisted, demented, retarded inbreeds. Your children will hate you. Your neighbors will despise you. And rightly so. And there you go. Dana snaps. Then I finally wax out and loses his friggin' mind because I can't handle people that can't get come to grips with reality and are paid to come in and manipulate and deceive and lie and, and deceive in a way that is so harmful to everything on this planet for just so they can get another month, just so they can get another paycheck, just so they can hang on to everything for another week. You demented fuckers. You won't fucking do it. You won't show up in public. You won't come out like me and make videos and go and do what I do and say, see, Dana's wrong. No, you just attack me and make up shit and try to put doubt in everybody's fucking mind rather than getting with the program and go and dealing with it. Because that's what you are. You're cowards. Every one of you that have done that to me in the last couple of days in particular and in the last nine months. Right? We know who you are. Don't think we don't. Don't think we're not coming looking for you in the near future to expose you for what you've been doing. That you're the reason why we can't have a debate. Because of your mental retardness and your paycheck is at stake. And to come in and slur me without going out there and checking, without taking pictures and publishing it, is unacceptable. I'm not making things up. You don't take pictures. You don't name the spots. You don't publish it all and then have someone come in and say he's making it up. Right? That's an apologist. Fuck off. Get the fuck off my site and stay off it, you demented little fucking worm. I am coming looking for your IP address when this show is over and we will be talking to you in the future because you need to be called out. We are going to call out all of you fuckers that done this to us. All you trolls out there, don't think we're going to forget you. Don't think Dana don't pay attention. If you do, you made a fucking mistake that you will pay for in the future. I can assure you. After I do my 60 days on the West Coast. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, see, I'm not supposed to have that. Stay the fuck off my site, you fucking trolls. Because what you're going to do is something that you already done to me, was you brought out the pissed off side of me, and that always comes back on your shoulders. Trust me. Because I'll come after you for three days in a row for that one. I'll come after you every day this week now, just because you showed up tonight. In fact, every Wednesday from now on is Pickering Night. Pickering, Ontario, every Wednesday, I'm going to destroy your fucking pensions. Mark it down. Take it to the bank. Good night, folks.